Hey, hey, you invite people on Facebook? It's the, uh, you know which one it is? Alright, you good, you can speak. You know what's going on. Like, um, Alright, here's that one. Yeah, we just invite. Just tap. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you invite people on Facebook? Yeah, you invite people on Everybody tap in, tap in. Uh, this is going to be a quick lesson about real estate and investing part two. All right. It's going to be a quick lesson on real estate and investing part two. <clears throat> on this part, um, I'll be talking more about uh, my story and uh, going through the home buying process. So you could, it could be more personal and uh, more real for you. So that's what I wanted to come back on here and, uh, you know, give you some tangible numbers and things to look at. Because um, I know last time we got the gist of the home buying, but I just wanted to go over again in case uh, somebody was looking to buy a home. All right, and I wanted to give uh, the steps. We talked about that, but just going to reiterate them. And then uh, we'll go into the pros and the cons of uh, real estate and investing. So you don't feel uh, set up, so to speak, and you'll know the good, the bad, and kind of the ugly about uh, going into real estate. Because uh, everybody sees, hey, we got a home, this and that. So it's... Um, you know, I just want to make sure we hone in on what is really what is really happening when you get in a home. All right, so uh, just hang tight. We wait for some more people to get in here, and uh, then we'll get started. All right. Uh, so, and appreciate y'all. Welcome. How y'all day going? I appreciate y'all tuning in as always. All right. So I pre really appreciate everyone that um always tuning into the Black Agenda, and they got the stamina to sit up here and listen to me uh, teach for so long. <laughs> All right, because I know some people are like, man, I got stuff to do. All right, but um, I really appreciate everybody getting this work, getting that education, and uh, you know, getting that that peace of mind that you need to learn about things you might not necessarily know about. And when you learn about this stuff, I want you to always remember that it's not your fault that you don't know. All right, because um, a saying that I love so much is that we don't know what we don't know. So um, don't feel bad if you don't know some of this stuff. But when you do get the information, make sure you apply it. Um, like I said in the video, they say applied knowledge is a uh, power. All right, and even if you're not looking to buy a home, this could potentially set you up and get you interested in uh, you know, doing a little bit more research, which I hope uh, you would do if you're looking to buy a home or if you're looking to kind of get into real estate and see where uh, things could go for you. All right, uh, how many people got it? Uh, eight and two. All right, cool. All right, so I'm gonna give uh, about another minute and then uh, we're gonna get started. Uh, give me one second, I'm gonna get some water. That's a lot of people. started uh, with the lesson so I wanted to start with my steps all right so the first step that we talk about is a uh, credit all right so you want to make sure you get your credit right all right and if you don't have good credit you're going to need um, a lot more cash to put down because that's just how the process works if you have good credit it's, um, it's probably less cash to put down uh, when you are getting a home all right so that's why I got a uh, credit and cash here all right you could do cash deals but you literally just do cash I know I'm just explaining because I know it seems uh, a little basic, but it's really just cash deals. And you got uh, many different types of loans. You got the FHA, you got conventional loans, you got uh, VA loans, and things of that nature that you could use to, um, you know, put yourself in an advantageous position to uh, get you a home. Because sometimes you won't even have to put um, any money down uh, for your home as well. All right, um, if you VA typically. All right. So the second process after um, you have your credit and cash, and they run it. Uh, you're going to have your lender, they're going to pre-qualify you, all right, potentially give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down on a, a pre-qualifying process, all right, so this is after they run your credit, they're like, okay, everything checks out, they're looking through uh, your bank statements and things of that nature and making sure, you know, there ain't no dirty money coming in, uh, there ain't too much money going out, you don't have too much debt to the point where you get into a home that you cannot pay for or you cannot afford, all right, so that's the good uh, thing about uh, going through the home buying process because if you got the right lender and you got the right realtor, they will really look out for you and let you know if it's a good idea or not. So that's definitely something that you have to uh, hone in on when you're going through this process. All right, so um, the next step, you pre-qualify. When you pre-qualify, 
after that, they're gonna give you an amount that you uh, pre-qualified for. So um, with my home, it was, well, when I was going through the home buy process, I believe it was about uh, $220,000 that I uh, pre-qualified for, all right? And then um, I went home searching. So after that, you go find a home. So you get with a realtor, you wanna start looking for homes and things that you know you might be interested in because that's the next step. All right, let me know if y'all follow me. If y'all don't follow me, let me know if y'all follow me. All right, are y'all understanding uh, what I'm saying? Uh, let me know if y'all follow me right now. All right, because I don't want to uh, go too fast. All right, we good? We good? All right. So um, after you find a home, your realtor, they will contact. They will contact um, the seller, all right? And they will put in a contract um, on the home. Now, the contract process, it could be long or it could be short. So that's one thing about uh, having a contract process because you might have a seller that's um, motivated to sell. That mean they're trying to get that house off. They just want to get the equity. Um, I have one example with that where uh, it was a, um, a home, a rental property that I was looking at where the guy, he brought it for cash like six or five years ago for $50,000. But now the home is appraising for, um, I believe it was 150. So he brought it cash with that uh, 50,000, but he um, once he sold it, he was able to uh, capitalize and uh, get that money back on the back end uh, once he sold the uh, rental property. So that could also uh, be a good thing uh, as far as the investing goes. All right, and then uh, also with the contract, if you have a good uh, realtor, they will work out a deal for you on your behalf, all right? So I know with my personal story, when I was getting a home, we were able to get the uh, seller to give back um, about, I think it was a little over $5,000 um, on the deal. So I actually got a pretty decent deal with putting cash down. So I only had to put down, uh, well, I got my book, the title company, they give you a big book, of all the information, so a lot of paper. All right, so um, it was cash to close. It was only $5,755. Now, uh, part of that number with the realtor putting in a contract is escrow. So with escrow, um, <clears throat> we put about $2,000 down. So with escrow, escrow account, that's basically, if y'all know about gambling, because this is the only example I can think of like right off the top of my head, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, with gambling, if you ever seen people gambling and then, uh, you have one person they got that cash in their hand and the other person where they're going against has their cash in their hand and then they have a middleman, all right? The middleman, that would be your escrow, all right? The escrow company, because they're gonna hold the money and that's basically telling both sides, all right, we're serious about this property and we really wanna start the process, all right? Now, if everything falls through, you do get that money back, so it's just pretty much, um, almost like a deposit, so to speak, to, to some nature, all right? Now, um, after that, you put in a contract, the contract get approved, everybody agree to terms, now you're gonna have uh, your inspections and your surveys, all right? Now, uh, for the inspections and the surveys, um, the numbers can vary, but typically, all right, it's gonna range from $400 to $500 each. Um, if you're doing, I think, wind mitigation, and then you have the inspection, so it'll be about $400 to $500 um, for that cost. So that's another $1,000 that you have to be um, essentially ready to kick out um, prior to you closing on the home, all right? Because you wanna get the inspection, um, after I closed on my home, I went straight to the uh, furniture store and the guy, he told me a story about, you can skip the inspection process, but I really don't advise that because of the story with this guy. He skipped the inspection because he's like, yeah, I skipped it because, um, you know, the people, they just come in the house, they make sure every plug works, they make sure the water's running, they make sure uh, the AC's working, they check, uh, they just check the whole house, but it seems very simple, but it's very important because what happened to this guy, he did not get that inspection and come to find out he had termites and he was out of that house in no time. So inspection, I know it costs, but it's very, very vital to get that. All right, I highly suggest you get that. Please do not skip that. I would say it should be mandatory in the home buying process. All right, so another thing throughout this whole process, you wanna get all your bank statements and assets in order, all right, because um, when you pre-qualify, you'll have that information, but you wanna get it. They're gonna keep asking you for the same paperwork, your bank statements, so they can see a consistent flow of cash. Now, they're doing this because they want to make sure there is no uh, dirty money involved, potentially. All right, so let's say you had $20,000 in your account, right? And then all of a sudden, during that uh, period, it didn't come in the, uh, three months prior to that, they're probably going to flag you and ask, where did this money come from? And you're going to have to prove that that money is clean and you got it from somebody or somewhere, um, and then they're going to uh, you know, let things go from there and it's going to play out and be like, okay, you're good. All right, because if it doesn't, they'll flag you, and it's definitely going to put a hold on the uh, home buying process. 
All right, because you can't go from having $20,000 in your account when you start the process and then having $40,000 potentially in your account. And then it's like, okay, where did this money come from? We, we pro potentially, if you buy that much, you probably didn't get $20,000 in one paycheck. Just saying, but if you do, bless your heart. All right? Make sure we, we, we get together on that one if y'all doing it. All right? <laughs> all right. Um, now, another thing we're getting on your bank statements and assets. You have to be organized to make the process easy for the lender and the realtor. All right, what I did was I got a flash drop. I literally put a folder for everything. My assets, which is my, um, my stock, um, if I liquidated anything um, out of savings, and uh, if I had any assets in my bank savings, I put them all in different folders on my um, flash drop so I could literally just send it off uh, my ID, things of that nature, um, so I could just send it off. It made it very easy because if you're doing your part, the process just becomes that much more easier because you'll be all over the place trying to, Oh, I need to go get this. Oh, I need to go get that. But if you get things in order, you'll be good. All right. Now, uh, the pre-approval process. Now, when you get pre-approved, the ball is really rolling now uh, with the pre-approval process. All right. So once you get into the uh, pre-approval process, seven and eight kind of go together. You have multiple closing uh, disclosures. All right. And you're going to lock in your interest rate. All right. Because they're going to ask for that same information once again. All right, and then um, they'll be going to try to lock in your interest rate. Now, interest rates, they fluctuate every single day. So once you get a good interest rate, if you have a good lender, all right, they're going to lock it in. I know my lender, she was off the chain. She called me at 10 o'clock at night and was like, hey, we got this rate, we all good to go. I locked it in for you because that's the lowest we're gonna see. And it really was during that time, um, the, the interest rate that we got. So I was uh, more than grateful uh, for, uh, for doing that, all right? And then uh, nine, resubmit the paperwork for review. Um, that's more paperwork that you got to do like this book is all of the paperwork that you will be seeing all of this stuff is signed these are they give you the breakdown of the numbers they give you all your paperwork it's a book literally so um, after you submit all the paperwork you clear the close you'll get an email saying we're clear to close now when you get to the closing table that thing takes about an hour hour and a half because you're literally signing all of these papers and you want to be reading all right what you're getting or what I did was I looked at uh, closing disclosures uh, that were already on the internet pretty much and looked at some examples of them so I could uh, kind of get an idea because this process, you can get a lawyer if you want to, all right? Now, uh, we're going into the uh, pros, all right? Uh, we're gonna be finishing up soon. Uh, we got any questions? All right, all right so the pros, all right? So you, home to live in, all right, very simple. You get a home to live in. I know for me, that was a big deal for getting home because uh, during that process, um, I was pretty much homeless. So it was like, get a home. I didn't want to rent again because rent down here is high as hell. All right. So that's why um, I kind of shot away from it. All right. And then um, calculating the numbers for living in the home. All right. So that's saving money potentially. Now, for me, the rent that I was, uh, where I was living at, it was uh, $1,580. So that's about $20,000 a year. All right. So when I was getting a home and going into that uh, process, the mortgage was thirteen eighty two, so I saved about four thousand dollars per year. All right, on the um, on my um, monthly expenses. I mean, yeah, the monthly well, the yearly expenses at that point. All right. Now, number three, you can make money off your property. Now, what I did was I mentioned it in other lot that I um, did Airbnb at my home. All right, and I was renting out rooms, so potentially I made about it was a little over probably five thousand dollars that I made that year for uh, just renting out the rooms, all right? I was barely home, so I was very comfortable with it. Um, I tell you, if you're gonna do that, I um, advise you to get cameras or have somebody that you trust that uh, you want in your home. They have positive energy and uh, things of that nature. All right, we got any questions? Um, 1580 for one bedroom? 1580, no, it was a two bedroom. It was a two bedroom gated community, so, you, and they had a pool, they had the little waterfall in the middle of the lake. That's what you really paying for, so. You know how Florida is. They're going to try to get you every time with the amenities. They had a gym the whole nine. They get free donuts and breakfast every other Saturday. So they gave the value, but I mean, for some people, it's like, all right, man, like 1580. All right. Now, uh, all right, going uh, off of making money on property, uh, you gain equity. All right, you could gain equity on your property now. My home was appraised at uh, about $225,000. And it was about 220 um, when I closed on the home, so it went up by five thousand dollars. But with the deal that we got on the um, on the closing, uh, we were at about 193. 
All right. So that's about seven thousand plus uh, about it's about thirty two thousand dollars in equity. If I wanted to sell the home, I would have that equity coming back after um, you do the seller's costs and things of that nature. All right, you'll, it'll, it'll decrease a little bit because you have to pay those costs for selling the home. It does cost to sell your home, so don't think you just don't get all that money back. All right, everything costs. All right, and then um, the last one, a peace of mind. All right, I know for me, it was a peace of mind because I was like, okay, I don't have to worry about sleeping in my car. I don't have to worry about carrying around clothes and things of that nature or living with different people. And it just made me a lot more comfortable um, knowing that I had a place to lay my head, you know? And um, having that peace of mind is nothing like it uh, when you, you know, once you complete the process and you're like, wow, I really did it, all right? And you have to, um, you have to have uh, the stamina to get this thing done, all these things. Now, let's go into the uh, cons, all right? Now, what the cons, I put stamina over here. All right, you have to have stamina. I'm a person, sometimes I don't like dealing with people, all right? I really don't, all right, because somebody might have a stink attitude and I'm not the one for it, all right? So I'll be like, all right, woosah, all right? And if I gotta keep doing it all day, I'm like, oh my God. But I had a really good uh, lender and I had a really good realtor and the escrow people and the title company, they were all good people, so the process was smooth because I had my stuff in order, so that's another thing. You gotta have that stamina to deal with people because most people are gonna be calling your phone, all right, trying to check, make sure you got this, you got this, and they might call you and ask for the same thing you already sent, so you gotta be ready for that and not, you know, kind of snap on them because you're just like, I already sent that to you. Like, because that's just where I was getting in my head through, like, this, uh, it was about 28 day process. All right, so we got any questions? All right, so uh, next, mortgage taken out. All right, now, a lot of people like, I bought a home, all right? You didn't necessarily buy the home. All right, so we have to kind of, you know, unlearn that potentially, all right? You took a mortgage out on the home, all right? That is putting you in debt, all right? You didn't buy the home. The bank or your uh, lending company or mortgage company, they own the home until you pay it off, all right? So that's something that you definitely have to be cognizant of uh, when you say you're buying a home. Just remember that if you default on that, it can be taken away from you if you default on your mortgage and things of that nature, all right? All right, and then uh, fixing and repairs, all right? So this is a big one recently for me, and I'm gonna share this story, and I'm gonna be a little passionate about it. So I'm warning y'all, <laughs> all right? So bear with your brother Ken, all right? So fixing and repairs, all right? So uh, the home that I got, you know, it was on well, which I thought was like the greatest thing ever. I'm like, wow, I'm not gonna have a water bill, great, all right? But the well had broke. So I was without water for almost three weeks, and it wasn't because I didn't have the money. It's just the process of switching over to city water, getting the pipes laid, and then having them come out to um, drop a meter all right, down. We got any questions? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. In your experience, how did you know who and where to get resource from to start your home process? All right, so with the resource, getting the resources, um, you want to find a good realtor. Chuck, he was really good with me. He made the process so easy because he was knowledgeable about it, and he already had a home before. All right, because sometimes realtors, they never had a home. I know that sounds crazy, but sometimes they really don't have a home, all right, or went through that process. Or if they did, they sold it just like Chuck, but he knew the process fully. I could call him anytime of the night, and it made it very easy for me. So your realtor needs to be re very good. Your um, lender needs to be very good, all right, on, es um, on educating you on those things, all right? Now, with the fixing and repairs, we get in the pipe and done. That was $1,100, unexpected, mm -hmm. out of my pocket. That was just the piping, all right? Now, hooking my water up to the city of Boynton's line, that was another $2,300, almost $2,400, all right, to get the water connected. This was out of nowhere, and this is during a pandemic, all right? <laughs> So, fixing and repairs, that is a con, all right, for me, because if you do not have that type of capital saved up to just drop, uh, basically, shoot, almost $5,000, all right, I advise you not to get a home, all right, because you're going to need money for your repairs if something happens unexpectedly, all right? And if you have insurance, sometimes they'll cover it, but sometimes it's gonna take too long, so you'll rather pay for it out of pocket and then go back on the back end and uh, look at things because the, it's just gonna take too long. So um, that's something else to look into uh, with their insurance company. All right, so, and then uh, the next one, you could potentially lose equity on your home if the, there starts being a lot of shootings or something in the neighborhood, the neighborhood starts to go getting ran down or they put like a, like a strip club across the street or something or uh, they put you in a neighborhood where it's a, a rampant, like people just hanging out 
the property value is going to go down, all right? And if it's uh, a neighborhood like uh, Chris Redding, I'll be on this week with him um, on Let's Talk, his platform. Uh, we talked about um, his mother who bought her home uh, was a little while back, and now they built um, this pile of waste uh, place next to it, which is bringing down the property value of the homes in that area. Question? How many years after purchasing a home can a person sell? Um, I believe you have to be in the home for uh, one year. Don't quote me on that. I believe it's like one full year. It has to be a primary residence, um, especially if you're doing an FHA loan. So you can't rent the house off right off back. You can, but you want to be really careful with that because that's one of the stipulations when you're doing a, a FHA loan. It has to be a primary residence for a while before you um, try to sell the home off or rent it out to um, a potential prospect. All right, so make sure um, you're a little bit careful with that. All right, we got another question? All right. Now, um, interest slash principal, all right? This is the last one, all right? So with interest and the principal, all right? So when you, we went over this a little bit in part one, all right? So with the interest and the principal, all right? When you're paying your mortgage on your home, all right? The interest is gonna be what you're paying towards for the most part for the first like 15 years, all right? So if the money's not going to the principal, that's like the main mortgage, like lowering the price. So the bank or the lending company, they're getting their money up front from you uh, with the interest rate, all right? So a lot of the money is going toward interest, is not going towards the principal, all right? So you have to be very, um, you know, aware of that, all right? And I'm even still educating myself on this process because um, I started putting down, well, putting in more money on my mortgage so I could kind of beat the interest just a little bit, all right, to pay it down faster because being in a home for 30 years, that's kind of like, that's not something I want to do, you know, be paying on a home for 30 years. All right, so we got any questions? All right, so um, that's uh, pretty much it. We got our real estate investing part two. We got our steps. We got our pros. We got our cons. I hope I was able to uh, answer all of your questions and make you a little bit more knowledgeable. I really appreciate everybody that always tunes in. All right, um, we did our giveaway um, on Sunday, so I thought about doing one today, but uh, it was probably not. All right, do y'all want to give away? Let me know. Let me know, all right? Who, who's still on there? How many we got? 14. 14? Four. All right, all right. There's a whole bunch of likes. I think they want to give away. They said what? It's a whole bunch of likes. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of likes for a giveaway? Uh -huh. all, all right. You got a question. All right, what's the question? Which, we'll go on to that first. Which would you recommend buying? Land, then build, or buy a home? Um, I would recommend buying a home, all right, because I never went through the land process. But I could imagine it's uh, way more costly in some respects because of um, you got to get the home built, you got to get the pipes laid down, all that stuff, and then you know going to the process. But if you go through a company that has homes for sale that they're building from the ground up, that'll be an easier route because they already have the process kind of packaged up for you, and then you could just uh, they build on the house from the ground up. You go on it. I like this house. They give you um, your deal, and then you just go from there because they already have it started uh, for you. All right. You got a question? Um, a comment? What? When you pay extra, you must stay, it goes towards principal. Yeah, yeah. When you pay extra, you want it to go towards principal, so you want to be paying on your mortgage a little bit early. Oh, and another pro of, um, of having a home now, the um, when you're making your payments, all right, it's due on the first like everybody else, but they give you 14 days to pay it before it's late. So. If it's due on the first, you have to the 15 to pay it. If you need a little bit more capital to uh, get up before you are late on your mortgage payment. So that's an advantage if you ever get in a tight situation where you need a little bit of flexibility. All right. Now, I only recommend that if you're absolutely needing it. Okay. But you do have those extra 14 days to get your money right, pay your mortgage, and then go about your business. All right. So uh, any more before we go? All right. Uh, so let's do this giveaway so we can get up out of here. I appreciate everybody coming. So, uh question. This is going to be hard for y'all. All right. So question, we're going to see who get it first. Now listen up because everybody's like, man, you should have said this a bit more specific. I'm going to be specific as I can for you right now. All right. So with the black agenda, all right, how much does it cost right now? How much does it cost to join the book club? How much does it cost to join a black agenda book club? It's a monthly cost. What is the cost? What is the cost for joining the Black Agenda Book Club? I'm, I'm waiting on you. Uh, 
um, German underscore made 90 says seven dollars. All right, German got it. All right, so it's seven bucks. Hey, German, you taking all the money from everybody. All right, um, German won fifty dollars. Um, that was like a couple weeks ago um, on our uh, giveaway. Can I participate? Um, <laughs> yeah, you can participate. It's the fun part about joining the Black Agenda. All right, I appreciate everyone that pours into me. All right, and then I pour it back into you as well. All smiles set seven eighty nine to be exact. <laughs> that's with taxes, but I'll give it to uh, Jeremy because she set the seven dollars because that's what's that's what's on the flyer. All right, so all smiles, you are right. All right, but I got you right on Sunday. All right, so I, I believe that was Sunday. Uh, you got right, so you're good on that. All right, so um, Jeremy made uh, Tierra. Um, I'll send you fifteen dollars for lunch this week, so um, I'll take care of that. Um, I think you already my cash app from last time you won. All right, because you tune in every time, and I really appreciate you always tuning in and, um, you know, taking in the information that I'm getting, and you're actually applying it, all right, because I get uh, messages telling me you have to process with the business plan and things of that nature. So it does pay to tune in to the Black Agenda, all right, because I love to give back to the community as well that has poured into me, all right. You can't just take, take, take from your community. You need to give back, all right, even if it's a little bit. I definitely advise that if you're running a business. She said give it to all smiles. Give it to all smiles? <laughs> Bless her. All right, we'll give it the all smile to you. That's, that's awesome, I like that, all right? Good job, Tierra, all right? Paying it forward, all right? All right, now, if y'all don't have any more questions, I will be heading out. I'll give you about 30 seconds to let me know if there's any more questions before I go, all right? And uh, just a reminder, uh, you can join the book club. It's only seven bucks a month. We had our first meeting today, it went phenomenal. All right, we talked about our book we read, we had our intro. Everybody's positive and everything went well. Um, I'm very encouraged about the direction that it's going and we're definitely creating a legacy with the Black Agenda Book Club. All right, and remember, you can go on the website as well, all right, uh, blackagenda.com and everything is marked down, all right, 20% or better. All the shirts are like 20 bucks right now. All right, and I have an entirely uh, new inventory um, in here and I got more coming in. So I definitely uh, want to encourage everybody, get your shirt, make your commitment to change and uh, you know, just tune it in, all right? Any questions before we go? I'll give it oh, one. All right. What's the book for the month? What's the book for the month? Hmm, you gotta join the book club for that one. Hmm. All right, but I'll give this one away, all right? Uh, for the book club, all right? For the month, so I can let you know how this process works. So I need to give you insight, all right? So our book for the month is The Four Agreements, all right? It's The Four Agreements, all right? It's The Four Agreements, all right? Uh, this is our book for the month, all right? This is a very powerful book. It's about uh, self-improving, and uh, it might it touch a little bit on self-transformation, but this is an awesome book. It reconfigures your brain about what you think you know, and it talks a lot about traditionalism and how you could, uh, you know, question things that's been passed down to you through your parents, grandparents, and things of that nature. And it's not in a bad way. It's in a very encouraging and educational way that you'll learn about yourself with the four agreements. All right, and it's a very short book. It's only, um, I believe it's like 140 pages, so it's a pretty quick read, but it is jam-packed with life-changing information, and I vouch for this book, and it's only 13 bucks, all right? So it's definitely a bargain uh, for you, all right? What'd you say? I got it for $6 on Amazon. You got it for 6 on Amazon? So you can go on Amazon and get it even cheaper, $7. All right, I went to Barnes & Nobles. That's what I do on Saturday. Barnes & Nobles, chill, go get some books, read, and... uh you know, decompress from the entire week. That's uh, one of my things that I like to do. So um, if we don't have any more questions, uh, peace and love, family. I appreciate you tuning in. All right, be safe, be well. And um, this week, I'll be going live on um, Chris Redding's platform where we'll talk about uh, Let's Talk, so it'll be like a webinar. I'll be getting a promo video out soon, and I'll also be, um, I'll go live as well on there so you can all tune in to uh, what I'll be educating them on that day. And um, you know, tune in, all right? We're um, coming together as brothers, coming together as business owners, coming together as community leaders to make things happen and educate our people. So I definitely encourage you to uh, come on in and uh, get some more education, some knowledge, all right? So uh, peace and love, family. See you later.